pirates aboard the black sailed ship the vector sail the seven seas looking for gold and riches that's a big boat i see a boat the lookout aboard the boat she's a small group of fishermen on the other side of an island can you say rowboat i'm a pirate so the ship heads off around the island to attack the fishermen. Victor, Victor, the ship. In order to attack the fishermen, the ship has to sail from one side of the island around to the other. In this problem, we're going to look at the actual path the ship takes around the island, then determine the necessary displacement of the ship so it can attack the fishermen. Now first, the ship is going to sail due south, a total displacement of 1,500 meters. Then the ship is going to turn and sail east, a total of 2,000 meters. Lastly, the ship is going to sail 1,000 meters in a direction that is 35 degrees north of east. In this problem, we're going to find the total displacement, that is the change in position from where the ship starts to the canoes where the ship will finish. That means we're going to have to find the actual distance between the start and finish point. And we're also going to find the direction relative to directly east that the ship winds up traveling. Really what we're doing in this problem is we're adding together three displacement vectors. Those three displacement vectors are going to yield one resultant displacement. That resultant displacement can be broken up into horizontal and vertical components. So to add these three vectors together, we're going to look at the sum of all displacements in the x-axis. We're going to look at the sum of all displacements in the y-axis as well. So starting with the x-axis, the 1,500 meters which the ship travels south is entirely in the y-axis, or north-south as it appears on our page. So we say the horizontal displacement is zero. In the next leg of the trip, the 2,000 meters east, the ship travels 2,000 meters in the x-axis or in the east-west axis. Lastly, we have this thousand meters. That vector is somewhat directed north and somewhat directed east. So what we need to do is break that vector up into its horizontal and vertical components. Realize this is just a right triangle. So we're gonna break this vector up into its sine and its cosine. The horizontal component being 1000 cosine 35, that's 819 meters. So we'll show the displacement in this third leg as being 819 meters in the x-axis. Looking at all three displacements along the x-axis, we get a total displacement of 2,819 meters. Moving on to the y-axis. The first leg of the trip, the 1,500 meters, is due south. So that's 1,500 meters traveled in the y-axis, but because it's down or towards the south, we say it's negative. The next leg, 2,000 meters, is entirely in the x-axis, or the east-west axis. So it has no vertical component. The 1,000 meters is somewhat north. Its vertical component is 1,000 sine 35. That's 574 meters. Adding together all three displacements in the y-axis, we find the total displacement is 926 meters south, or in the negative direction. So by finding the two components of our resultant displacement, we can now solve for the total displacement as a magnitude and as a direction. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, and we're going to combine the sum of all displacements in the x-axis with the sum of all displacements in the y-axis. By using the Pythagorean theorem, we find the total displacement of the ship from where it begins until it reaches the canoe, is 2,967 meters. In order to find the direction which the ship travels, we can use the inverse tangent and the magnitude of the x and y displacements to solve for the direction. We find that direction is 18.2 degrees. That's 18.2 degrees below the positive x-axis, which on a map we would say is south of east. Having sailed around the island, the ship is ready to attack the fishermen. That's 
the cannon. Fire the cannon. Hmm. Eat my boat. The rain is crazy. Having sailed all the way around the island, the ship arrives at the fishermen in their canoes. The pirate ship is only 100 meters away from a canoe. The pirates hope to shoot a cannon shell at the canoe and sink it and then take the fisherman prisoner. The cannon can fire a shell at 40 meters per second. So if the cannon is shot in the correct direction, the shell will go through the air and strike the canoe, sinking it. What we're going to solve for in this problem is the correct angle at which the cannon needs to be fired in order to strike the boat. In this problem, we're going to use something called the range equation. The range equation combines several of the kinematic equations within the x and y axis, and it allows us to solve for the range of a projectile given its initial speed and the direction in which it's fired. If you want to see the derivation of the range equation, there's a link in the corner. We know the distance to the canoe is 100 meters, and the speed of the shell is 40 meters per second. By plugging those values into the range equation, we can solve for the direction which the shell needs to be fired. So we plug our values from the problem into the range equation and solve for theta. Now because of this term sine 2 theta, which is within the range equation, it's important we're really careful with our order of operations when going through and trying to solve for theta. In solving for theta, we find that the angle the cannon must be fired in order to hit the canoe is 19 degrees. So if the cannon is fired at 19 degrees above horizontal, the cannon shell will travel through the air and strike the canoe. There's actually a second angle that the cannon can be fired at and still hit the canoe. So to find that other angle, we need to have a better understanding of the range equation. And just as importantly, we need to back up and take a look at the unit circle. In solving for the angle the cannon need to be fired, we found this term 2 theta was 38 degrees. We took the sine of those 38 degrees. Now realize when we look at the unit circle, every angle between 0 and 90 degrees shares a value of sine with an angle that is in the second quadrant. There's actually two angles that have the same sign. In this case, 142 degrees has the same sign as 38 degrees. And that's gonna lead us to a second angle that this cannon can be shot. Now it makes no sense that the cannon would be shot at 142 degrees, that would be away from the canoe, and then the cannonball would land on the other side of the ship. But if we divide that by two in solving for theta, we find theta can equal either 19 degrees or 71 degrees. This means the cannon can be shot at a low 19 degrees or a very high 71 degrees. Either angle will allow the cannon shell to strike the canoe. Getting back to the storyline here, there's another canoe trying to paddle away. And while the ship's been firing on the first canoe, that other canoe has been getting farther and farther away. So now we're gonna go through and see just how far these cannons on board the ship can fire a shell. To do this, we're again gonna look at the range equation. Again, we need to take a look at the range equation and how it relates back to the unit circle. The range is maximized when the sine function is maximized as well. Now, the greatest sine can ever be is 1. That occurs at 90 degrees. If we increase the sine to 91 degrees, the sine actually gets smaller. It's less than 1. The same thing is true at 89 degrees. For us, using the range equation, this means we want the value 2 theta to equal 90 degrees, or theta to equal 45 degrees. If a projectile is fired at 45 degrees, the range of that projectile across a level surface will be maximized. So by plugging in 40 meters per second as the speed of the projectile, and 45 degrees as theta, we find the maximum range of this cannon is 163 meters. The pirates discover that one of the fishermen in the water has a secret treasure map. I have a map. Give me the map. Using the map, the pirates sail off to find this mystical treasure. Let's find the treasure. In hopes of stealing the mythical treasure of Newton, our black-sailed pirate ship, the Vector, is going to sail due east across the seven seas 
to the fortress, which is guarding that treasure. There's a current in the ocean. That current's moving south at three kilometers per hour. If the ship sails due east, it should arrive at the fortress. However, there's a current in the ocean. The ocean is flowing due south. So as the ship tries to move east, the current is gonna sweep the ship south. The first thing we're gonna do in this problem is figure out how fast and in what direction is this ship actually going to travel. To find the direction the ship is actually going to travel, what we need to do is add together these two vectors. You'll notice the six kilometers per hour is a horizontal component of this triangle, which forms the speed as the hypotenuse. You'll notice the three kilometers per hour is the vertical component of that speed. So when we combine these two velocity vectors using the Pythagorean theorem, then we'll find the actual speed of the ship. And we find the speed of the ship is actually 6.7 kilometers per hour. That speed is not directly toward the fortress, it's slightly southeast. So next we're gonna find the actual direction which the ship is traveling. Knowing both the horizontal and vertical components of the speed vector, we're gonna go through and use inverse tangent to solve for the direction. So the inverse tangent of three over six means that this ship is gonna be traveling at 27 degrees south of east. If this ship was to continue on this path, it would miss the fortress completely. If the captain wants to pilot the ship directly to the fortress, the ship is going to need to be pointed slightly north, so that as the ship moves northeast, the current will sweep the ship back to the south, and as a result, the ship will just move in the easterly direction. What we're going to do now is figure out exactly what direction the ship needs to be pointed so that it can travel due east. Knowing the hypotenuse and the opposite side of the triangle, we're able to solve for the angle and we find that the angle which the ship needs to be pointed north is 30 degrees north of east. But you'll notice in this case, the resultant vector, or the actual speed of the ship, is the adjacent side of this right triangle. In the last problem when we were solving for the speed of the ship, if it was pointed straight east, the speed or the resultant vector was the hypotenuse. You can't always just say the hypotenuse of a triangle is the resultant. Next, we'll find the actual speed which the ship will move towards the fortress. Knowing the hypotenuse and the angle which the ship is pointed north, we can find the horizontal or easterly component of the ship's velocity. And we find the ship will be moving towards the east at 5.2 kilometers per hour. After following the map across the seas, the pirates find the map has led them to a fortress guarding the treasure. So they send out a small search party to investigate the fortress and the treasure. Soldiers on the fortress fire a warning shot. Fire. Upon seeing the approaching scout party, the soldiers of the fortress are going to fire a cannon horizontally of 40 meters per second. Now the cannon is located on top of the roof of the fortress, which is 20 meters above the waterline. The shell is going to travel through the air and strike the water just in front of the pirate boat. In this problem, we're going to go through and we're going to solve for the horizontal range of the cannon shell. We're also going to find the speed and direction which the shell is traveling when it strikes the water. Because the cannon shell is fired from the rooftop and lands in the water, it finishes at a different height than from which it was shot. That means we can't use the range equation in this problem. So what we're going to have to do is look at the motion of the cannon shell in the x-axis and independently look at the motion of the cannon shell in the y-axis. When the cannon fires the shell, the shell is initially going to move horizontally, but as it travels through the air, it's going to accelerate vertically. 
The horizontal displacement is what we're going to call the range of the shell. The initial horizontal velocity of the shell is 40 meters per second. And because this is projectile motion, there's going to be no acceleration in the x-axis. Consequently, the final velocity is also going to be 40 meters per second. The horizontal motion of the cannon shell is never going to change. But you'll notice we don't know enough information in the x-axis to solve for the range directly. We're going to need to find the time before we can find the horizontal range. Now the only way to find the horizontal range is to look in the y-axis. The shell is going to move from the top of the fortress down to the waterline as it travels through the air. That's a displacement of 20 meters downward, which is negative. Remember, we're continuing with our convention that up and to the right are positive, therefore down and to the left are negative. While the cannon is fired 40 meters per second horizontally, there's no initial vertical velocity. However, because the acceleration due to gravity vertically is 9.8 meters per second squared downward, the cannon shell will accelerate downward as it travels through the air. We're going to use the kinematic equations just like we normally would. It's very important when we're doing a projectile motion problem that we make sure to keep our values from the x-axis separated from our values in the y-axis. We cannot mix and match them. So if we want to solve for time using the y-axis, we can't use any of our values from the x-axis. Plugging our values exclusively from the y-axis into the displacement equation, we can solve for time. And we find the time it takes the shell to reach the water is two seconds. Now time is the only value that's shared between the two axes. That means the shell was moving horizontally for two seconds. Now we can apply the kinematic equations to the horizontal axis to solve for the horizontal range of the shell. And we find the shell travels 80 meters horizontally before striking the water. Having found the horizontal range of the shell, we're now going to go through and find the final speed and direction which the shell is traveling when it strikes the water. To solve for the final speed of the shell, we need to know both the horizontal and vertical components of the final speed. We already know the final horizontal velocity is 40 meters per second. It's always 40 meters per second. We'll need to use the kinematic equations to solve for the final velocity in the y-axis. Choosing the correct kinematic equation and using our values from the y-axis, we find that the final velocity of the shell in the vertical axis is 19.6 meters per second. That's negative because it's down. Now that we know both the horizontal and vertical components of velocity when the shell lands in the water, we can solve for both the speed of the shell and the direction it's traveling when it lands. Having found the final horizontal and vertical velocities of the shell when it lands in the water, we can combine them using the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the final speed or the resultant when the shell lands in the water. And we find the final speed of the shell is 44 meters per second. Lastly, we're going to solve for the angle which the shell is traveling when it strikes the water. To do this, we're simply going to use the tangent function and the two components of a right triangle, which has been formed by the speed and the final velocity vectors in each axis. In solving for theta, we find that the shell is traveling 26 degrees below the positive x-axis when it strikes the water. In this problem, we've solved for the range of the shell, as well as its final speed and direction it's traveling when it lands in the water. Despite the warning shot, the pirates keep rowing towards the fortress. I shoot at you! Hmm. He's in my boat. Oh no, sharks! Do -do 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 yeah! They're dead, Dio. To fire the cannon and hit the pirates in their boat, the cannon needs to be angled upward. The cannon is going to be tilted 25 degrees above the horizontal axis. It's still going to fire a projectile at 40 meters per second from 20 meters above the waterline. 
As the projectile moves through the air, it's going to move both vertically and horizontally. When the cannon is fired, the shell is actually moving up. So in this problem, we're going to find the maximum height the cannon shell reaches above the waterline, as well as the horizontal range of the cannon shell. First, we'll solve for the range of the shell. Remember, we can't use the range equation because the shell starts and finishes at different heights. So we're going to look at the motion of the shell in the x-axis as well as the y-axis. As the shell moves from the fortress to the boat, it's going to move a horizontal distance, r. Now when the shell is fired, it's fired slightly upward at an angle. The velocity vector of the shell when it's fired needs to be broken down in, into its x and y components using sine and cosine. We find the horizontal velocity of the shell is 36 meters per second, and the vertical velocity initially is 16 meters per second. So in our x-axis, we show the initial velocity as being 36 meters per second. Because this is projectile motion, there's no acceleration in the horizontal axis, which means the velocity in the x-axis is never going to change. Remember, we have to keep the motion in the x-axis completely separate from the motion in the y-axis. Looking at the y-axis, the shell is going to move from the top of the fortress to the waterline where the boat is located. That's going to be a downward displacement of 20 meters. The initial velocity in the y-axis is 16.9 meters per second upward, so we show it as positive. The acceleration in the y-axis is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We can use the kinematic equations and our values in the y-axis to solve first for the velocity in the y-axis when the shell strikes the water, and then the total time the shell will spend in the air. Choosing the correct kinematic equation and applying our values from the y-axis, we find it takes 4.4 seconds for the shell to travel from the top of the fortress to the boat at the waterline. Knowing the shell is traveling horizontally for 4.4 seconds, we can find the horizontal range of the shell. Applying our values from the x-axis into the correct kinematic equation, we find the horizontal range of the shell is 160 meters. Next, we're going to solve for the maximum height the shell reaches above the waterline. Because the shell reaches its maximum height at a different point in time than when it lands in the water, we're going to have to set up a completely new set of kinematic variables in order to determine the maximum height of the shell. Some of the variables within the x and y axes remain the same as in the first part of this problem. However, some will be different. First, we're going to solve for the upward displacement of the shell as it moves through the air. We're going to call this displacement h. It's not the maximum height, but it's the height above the top of the fortress. The initial velocity of the shell in the y-axis is still going to be 16.9 meters per second. And because we're looking for the maximum height, the final velocity of the shell is going to be zero. This is projectile motion, so the acceleration in the y-axis is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Applying the kinematic equations to the y-axis, we find the maximum upward displacement of the shell is 14.5 meters. Realize this is not the maximum height the shell reaches above the water. To find the actual maximum height of the shell, we need to add the upward displacement of the shell to the height of the fortress. And we find the maximum height of the shell above the waterline is 34.5 meters. Seeing their comrades in trouble, the pirate steers the ship towards the fortress. I want a treasure. And a great battle ensues. Can't have it. We got a share.
The black-sailed pirate ship of physics arrives at the soldier's fortress. The cannons on the ship fire a cannon shell at 40 meters per second, 30 degrees above the horizontal axis. The pirate ship is 120 meters away from the soldier's fortress. When the cannon shell is fired, it's going to travel through the air and strike the side of the fortress. In this problem, we're trying to find how high above the waterline the cannon shell is going to strike the fortress. Since the cannonball is traveling both horizontally and vertically, we're going to look at the kinematics in both the x-axis and the y-axis. We know the horizontal displacement of the cannon shell from the pirate ship to the soldier's fortress is 120 meters. When the cannonball is fired, it's moving at 40 meters per second at an angle 30 degrees above the horizontal. It is not traveling entirely in the x or the y direction, so we need to break those 40 meters per second up into their components. The horizontal component, 40 cosine 30, and the vertical component is 40 sine 30. This leaves us with a horizontal velocity of 34.6 meters per second. Because this is projectile motion, the cannonball doesn't accelerate horizontally, only vertically. So in the x-axis, the acceleration is zero. This means the initial velocity of 34.6 is also the final velocity. In the y-axis, the vertical displacement of the ball from start to finish is going to be h, the height above the waterline which the cannonball strikes the fortress. The initial velocity in the y-axis is 40 sine 30, 20 meters per second. Because this is projectile motion, we know the acceleration vertically of the cannonball is 9.8 meters per second squared. If we can solve for the time it takes the ball to travel horizontally from the pirate ship to the soldier's fortress, we'll be able to figure out how high above the waterline the cannonball is at that moment when it strikes the fortress. First, we'll choose the correct kinematic equation. By plugging in values from the x-axis, we find that the time for the cannonball to travel from the pirate ship to the soldier's fortress is 3.46 seconds. The cannonball has to be in the air the same amount of time in both the x and the y axis. So now we can transfer that time to the y axis. Now we have enough information in the y axis to solve for the height of the cannonball when it strikes the fortress. Again, we choose the correct kinematic equation where height is the displacement and we plug in our other variables from the y axis and solve for h. And we find the cannonball hits the fortress 10.5 meters above the waterline. You broke my foot. You're a bad man. I'm a bad <laughs> Having destroyed the fortress, the pirates collect the gold and sail away, never to be seen from again. I'm hoping daddy. What does F equal? I'm A. What does A squared plus B squared equal? C squared. What's the derivative of E to the X? E to the X. That's right. What do we need to know about triangles? Um, so good power. Can you hear? Can I hear it? <laughs>